chapter 4. Creek and moan. Creek and moan. Creek and moan. Searching for the music between the music. Trying to find the notes between the notes. The porch swing sang its song as she leaned in, looked at him, and very gently scratched his arm. The gesture telling him she wasn't upset but she wanted to ask him something. The question and his answer was important. Why haven't we talked about this? He smiled a nervous smile. He took a deep breath, held it in, thought for an eternity, and then exhaled. He had nothing. Let me think about that, he replied. Take your time. She stood up. I'll get us some wine. He was staring at the rain when she returned. Taking her spot on the swing, she handed him his glass, tucked her feet under his legs, and watched the rain with him as they drank their wine. After a while, she reached over and took his hand in hers. I'm just asking. She gave his hand a gentle squeeze. Why do you have to think about this so long? And before you answer, let me say this. She moved closer and leaned against him, putting her head on his shoulder as she said, Your past has shaped you into the man I love. I truly love with all my heart. The man I see in front of me is a good man. A damn good man. She squeezed his hand again, took a drink from her wine, Noticed his glass was empty and went into the house. She returned with the bottle and filled the glasses. Without looking at him, she sat close, grabbed his hand, and stared out at the rain. <coughs> Tell me, she said in a very calm voice. Grateful she wasn't looking at him, he squeezed her hand back. Well, he paused. She put her hand on his lap and stared at the rain and listened. One of the big reasons is I am worried it will change how you feel about me. His fingertips began to caress her shoulder. When I talk about it, write about it, sometimes even just think about it too long, I feel so insecure. I feel hopeless. I feel creak and moan, creak and moan, creak and moan. The swing rocked back and forth as the rain fell and she kept her head on his lap. He caressed her shoulder like a melody he was still trying to find the right music to. I always feel like that little boy again. Nothing I do is right. Everyone will leave me. You will leave me. And the nightmares. The, um, 
He drank from his wine, and his fingers kept their rhythm on her shoulder. Before you, I was perfectly happy being alone. Any of the so-called relationships I had, I knew I, I knew I knew they would not last, and I didn't want them to last. I knew I still had a darkness in me, and I held that darkness like it was a blanket. It kept me warm, and anyone with me pretty much knew that as well. Fingers caressing her arm, they stopped for a moment. But I met you, and I, I don't know, that changed. Creak and moan, creak and moan, creak and moan. Now I don't want to be without you. I guess I never told you from all those fears. And I am afraid that if I go back to that darkness of the childhood, I will be alone again. And you will leave. <laughs> but I will have... But I... But I will still have the memory of you to haunt me. And that is one ghost I don't think I can handle. And all of that... That terrifies me. He finishes his wine, but you are right, I didn't burn the boy stories. I tucked them away, knowing eventually I would have to go back to them. In some way, I always knew that. The same with songs from the hourglass. They sit in silence, his words settling over the day. She gets up leans down and kisses him on the lip, lips, and puts her head on his. I will be right back. She goes into the house and returns with a stack of boy stories. You always tell me things happen how they are supposed to happen. Well, she sits down next to him. I was meant to find this, and now it is time for you to finish writing them. She sorts through the papers looking at the titles. You say there isn't really a beginning, but there is always a beginning. We just have to find it and go from there. He smiles then, and the smile comes from deep in his heart. She really was beautiful. Her drive, her strength. He feels safe with this woman, and that is new to him. Something inside of him says, Shh. It is okay. If I had to say there was a true beginning, it would have started with the Greyhound bus and going to Texas. Everything truly changed after that. Just give me a second. I need to... Ah, oh, motherfucker. I've been drinking water for, what, two, three fucking days now. I'm gonna make me a glass of tears. I don't want to drink, but I need to fill that void of when I'm when I fall into that hole of remembering all that. I'm so used to drinking. The waters just make sure I hydrate it and everything. But a tub, a tub, mm -hmm. ow, a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or something like that. The ritual's still there for me. Because I can't, I'm almost out of weed weed. I have the vape pen. It's not the same. I need a ritual. <laughs> need a bunch of walnuts and I need to brush my teeth too. Damn, I'm all sorts of a mess. Okay, I got this, man. I do. I guess I do. Do I have any coffee? 
I have no cup. Fuck. <sighs> it is just way too hot to go out there and do anything. Fuck it. <coughs> Fuck it. You're procrastinating. You're procrastinating. You're procrastinating. Just get through this chapter. You don't hit stop until you get through the fucking chapter. Stop this whole pausing bullshit and just suck it up, Scooter. Suck it up, Scooter. Don't you fucking... Don't you, you stay. And by the time I'm done with this poor book... Okay. Ugh. Grinding my teeth. Stop grinding your teeth. <sighs> Finding a rhythm. Mom and I stepped onto the Greyhound bus, cold, broken wet, outside a small furniture store in Devonside, Indiana. My mom wiped, wiped, wiped tears off her face and squeezed my hand tight with the other. It's going to be okay. Things are going to be different, she said. Really? Really? What were doing? What the fuck was that? What was that? It better... Whatever. I'm not dealing with it right now. Wind's probably blowing something off or some critter. Just It's going to be okay. Things are going to be different, she said. She said that so many times. I think when I got older, um, I know I fucked up drinking. I think I said that too a lot, come to think of it. Funny how you become your parents as you get older. Both good and bad. Fuck out of my face. The next four days. Sorry, hang on. This is not easy. Having the sick feeling in my gut that things were never going to be the same again. And we would be moving like this for the rest of our lives. I wiped the rain from my face and put my tablet and pen underneath the seat. The next four days, the Midwest turned into the West in front of our eyes. We had $50 to our name. And she wasn't sure how long that would last. We slept in bus terminals, crawled under the stall doors because Mom didn't want to waste money on the pay toilets. They were a nickel every time. And we ate out of vending machines that dispensed moldy, out-of-date food because it was cheaper than the cafeterias and restaurants along the way. Mom had a high hopes of starting over. She knew a friend of a friend who lived in Texas. You just wait until we get to Houston. Things will be okay, you'll see. We were there two days when... Look, I, I didn't know you were planning on living here. I thought you had things planned for you and the kid and we were only gonna be and you were only gonna be here for a couple of days. But I thought everything was taken care of. I thought we were living here. Mom started to cry. Mom cried a lot. And was followed by a lot of anger. Taken care of Taken care of I get a call from Kathy saying a woman with a kid who would be staying here. That's it. You don't know me. I don't know you. And you expect me to take care of you? Taken care of. My roommate gets home Monday. You have until then. Fuck, that was a horrible weekend. That wasn't a bad woman. She just knew what my mom was. She wasn't no part of. God damn her fucking... Anyway, anyway, whatever. Sunday night, one day left. Mom and the woman were combing through the newspapers. I sat and watched Chips with her son, who would occasionally stick his tongue out at me when the adults were not looking. Wait, the woman says, picking the paper up to read it. To read it better. Here's one. Housekeeper wanted for man and son. 
food, room, and board. Let's call this. A phone call, an interview, a thank you that was not heartfelt, and we were moving again. We were still waiting for the report card to catch up with us in the mail. Since we were bouncing around so fucking much, it wouldn't catch up with us. And there was no proof I was in the fourth grade, and without the report card, Texas would not let me in school. Rather you have you stay home and learn nothing than put you in school. During that time, I learned some things on my own. Lessons of life you didn't learn in schools. I began to learn how to be alone and enjoy it. Nobody called me names when I was alone. Nobody tried to beat me up when I was alone. We lived with a deaf Mexican guy and his son. The wife was deported back to Mexico for not having a passport, which is how Mom got the job. Without the wife, they needed someone to cook and clean. Mom was supposed to be the housekeeper, but the job only supplied a room and meals, so she took a job at a local bar, Amy's Lighthouse, where she pretty much spent all of her time, on and off work. Every day when he and the boy would come, would get home from work and school, he would stomp around the house cussing out Mom for not being there. I stayed silent and hoped she would not, and hoped she would come home soon. I took a lot of the blunt abuse of uh, when Mom hurt people and fucked people over. They took it out on me because she was never there. They took it out on me a lot. The guy two apartments down was usually sitting out on his porch smoking, and I would go down and see him. Gary was his name, and the first time I met him, he asked me why I wasn't in school, and I told him. He nodded and left it at that. He just got out of prison and said he didn't want to know much. Easier to stay out of trouble that way. I mentioned to him that I was hungry and there was no food in the house. Well... If you keep your mouth shut on where you learned how to do it, I'll tell you how to get some easy cash. I agreed, and he went into his apartment and came back out with a coat hanger. He started to straighten it out. Go find a car in the parking lot across the street there. You can work this hanger into the soft foam around the door. He made the end into a small loop. Work the hanger down until there, this here loop fits over the door lock, and then pull up. When you get in the car, look around for change or a little bit of money. Don't take anything else. People won't miss a few dollars here or there. They will miss valuables, though, and besides, what are you going to do with valuables? Once you get what you want, lock the car back. He gave me the hanger. If you get caught, just say you thought it was your mom's car or something. You have an innocent look to you, and that'll help. One more thing. Don't run if you do get caught. You'd be surprised what confidence can do in a fucked up situation. It was easier than I realized. After several trials of twisting the hanger the wrong way, I got it down. An older woman pushing a cart came by and asked what I was doing. I told her my mom was inside shopping and I was just playing cops and robbers until she came back out. She kept walking with a strange stare, but no comment. I took the money I got from the car, bought some food, and was home before the man and the boy returned. Mom would get home late at night, do the dishes, clean, and would be gone before the guy could ask her any questions. Judging from the tone in his voice, he was almost at the end of his rope as my grandfather would say, and it wouldn't be long before he would explode. The guy two doors down also taught me how to reach up into a soda machine and pull cans of soda without ripping them open. That took several tries and a lot of soda spraying in my face. Another good trick, you can walk through a grocery store and just help yourself to stuff. Open a loaf of bread, get you a couple of slices, open some meat, some cheese, and eat the sandwich as you go around the store yelling for your mom. People will just think she bought, bought the sandwich in the store. 
We were in Texas almost two months when Mom came home from work one night. Ran upstairs, packed the small bag of clothes we had, grabbed me and ran out the door and into a cab, and we were moving again. We were always moving. And then there was nothing. Okay. Another chapter down. Okay. Man. Man, oh man, oh man.